Hello friends, my name is Coolio and welcome back to the channel. We are playing some more Pokemon Masters. Specifically today guys, I'm going to be breaking down a sort of tier list. But not really a tier list because I don't really want to do like any kind of countdown. But instead I'm going to go through and share with you some of the best Pokemon Sync pairs in the game currently to help you guys know who to roll for, who to summon when the game officially launches. So we're kind of going to break this down because these are Pokemon that I have my own personal opinions about that I think are amazing as well as this is some research from online tier lists that I've been able to find. So let's go ahead, we're going to jump in, we're going to talk about the best support in the game and probably the best Pokemon in the game solely because of the move that they have. Actually, let's go over to the decks. This Pokemon is a Pokemon that you get early on in the game and is absolutely incredible and that is Snivy who eventually becomes Superior. Now the reason why Rosa and Superior in my mind and in a lot of people's mind is the best or top tier SSR whatever you want to call it Pokemon in the game comes down to mainly two reasons. One is it has an X special attack for everyone on your team and so if you're running a full, like a really powerful special striking attacking Pokemon, Pokemon that have really high special attacks, this is a Pokemon that you have to have on your team due to the extra special attack all ability that she's got going on right here. Sharply raises the special attack of all allied sync pairs and it just stacks and stacks. In fact, I've currently got an, Al an Alolan Raichu on my team that can get like all the way up to like six stacks of special attacks and it's amazing. Unfortunately, I don't actually have uh, Alolan Raichu on this list, but I'm gonna be talking about him a little bit later. Now the other main reason, probably the main main reason why Superior is a must to have on your Pokemon team is the time to energize. It increases the move gauges of all allied sync pairs by three. Meaning if you've got Pokemon that are using three uh, move gauges in order to activate some of their special abilities, such as some of the other Pokemon we're gonna get into uh, later on in this list, this is an incredible ability to have because you can just throw out as much damage as you possibly can. So drop down a couple of special attacks all and then activate some of your uh, three move gauge abilities and then drop down time to energize and then throw out a couple more of those three gauge abilities and you're going to be doing an insane amount of damage. So Rosa and Superior are a must Pokemon team to have on yours. And in fact, just a little bit of a heads up, that Superior is kind of a Pokemon that can be a decently well off tank when it comes to special defense because uh, Superior has pretty good special defense and it's also got the fourth highest health in the game at 595 behind I think Rourke is the highest one, there's Blissey. So it's, it's a decent Pokemon to have because a lot of the AI are going to focus on Superior, try to take her out as fast as possible so it is nice that she's got a decent amount of defense and health behind it. So that is my number one pick for the support tier list uh, or like the best support Pokemon in the game. Now let's go ahead and actually talk about some of these special attack Pokemons. And the one I want to talk to you about uh, first is the one that I've been absolutely dying to get and I still don't have on my team is Karen and Houndoom, specifically Mega Houndoom. Now Mega Houndoom has the second highest special attack in the game right behind Gengar, but we're going to get to Gengar a little bit later, and in fact, I don't have Gengar on my special attack list, which I'm going to be talking about a little bit later down the line, due to some of the special abilities that Gengar and Agatha have, but the reason why uh, Karen and Houndoom are on my special attack list is mainly down to the fact that he gains Dark Pulse, which has a small chance to make the target flinch, which is really good to make sure like the target doesn't get their sync moves off, as well as the dire hit which sharply raises the user's critical attack and so if you're going for a physical based Pokemon get some Pokemon that can raise but uh, physical attacks and then you'll be able to use Karen and Houndoom drop down some of the beguiling dark pulse which is the sync move ability turning him into mount uh, into mega Houndoom giving him that special attack and then dropping down as many of these dark pulses as you possibly can with a chance of flinching the Pokemon as well. He also has the entertainment move which lowers the user's HP. Uh, well, the lower that his HP is, the more this move raises the user's special attack. And so he's kind of a Pokemon that you kind of want to save some of his abilities for later and it all kind of works really good together because when it comes to Pokemon like Agatha and Gengar, which you want to get the Mega Gengar, Usually you're not going to get those boosted stats until after they turned into their mega form which only happens after you've used a sync move. And so the reason why this is so good 
is if you save the Entertain Me until after he's activated his Sync move, by that time he's probably gotten his health knocked down a couple of levels, and once you activate this, it just massively increases his special attack, making his Dark Pulse, and making his second Sync move, if you can get it off after that, incredibly powerful. So that is Houndoom, on top of that he's also got the ability not to be burned, and he can't fall asleep, which there are some Pokemon, which we're going to get into a little bit later, where those types of abilities are really, really important. Now, the other Pokemon I want to talk about that is my other personal favorite special attack Pokemon is right, if I can find her, because she's like one of my favorites in the game, and I absolutely love her, Chantal and Chandelure. Such, such good Pokemon. Now, Chandelure doesn't have like the highest special attack, but she's definitely up there. I want to say she's like fourth or fifth when it comes to the special attack in the game, but the main reason why I absolutely love Chandelier is the fact that not only does she have her own X special attack to raise her uh, her abilities up, is because she can drastically uh, she drastically raises the user's speed, sharply raises the user's evasiveness, and leaves the user burned. Now, it does burn her, which is, is not really the best, but it makes it almost impossible for the opponent to take her down and attack her, which gives you an opening to drop down some Shadow Balls, which has a small, a small chance to lower the target's special defense. Now, activating the Shadow Ball using a Pokemon like Superior to increase the move gauge, you can throw off a whole bunch of Shadow Balls at the Pokemon with that chance of lowering the target's special defense. Because if you can get that off, lowering their special defense, dropping down an X special attack, and then being able to use her sync move, which by the way, Dark Tales of the Shadow Ball is the highest damaging uh, special attack sync move in the game, I believe, so far. I haven't seen one that's higher than that. If I'm wrong, let me know down below in the comments, but 300 attack is absolutely massive on top of the X special attack and on top of the Shadow Ball special defense decrease. So that is uh, Chantal and Chandelure. Let's go ahead. We're going to move on to the physical attackers, and I've actually got three for this because it was a little bit hard for me to decide if I wanted to just do one, if I wanted to do two. So I went ahead and actually did a total of three physical attackers in this game, physical strikers. The first one I want to talk about is one I still don't have, even though I want them so bad, is Olivia and Lycanroc. Now, Lycanroc has the, I believe, the second strongest uh, physical attack in the game without having to go into any kind of mega evolution. So that alone makes him extremely viable for a physical striking damager. On top of the fact that he's got his own X attack to increase his overall attack, as well as Stone Edge, which is pretty strong, but it also allows him to critical hit more easily, which critical hits can come in extremely handily Handy? Handy? Handy. When you're going up against super courses, because there are some Pokemon in the super courses where if you're not getting those critical strikes off, you're not taking them down, and so having Lycanroc on your team is amazing. He's also got the Hard as Diamonds ability, which sharply raises the user's accuracy and critical hit rate, which we're going to be talking about another Pokemon on the list just after Lycanroc that is also an amazing attacker, but doesn't have the best accuracy in the game and can sometimes miss those attacks, which in the end really sucks. So I'm really glad that he's got the hard as diamonds because that sharply raises the user's accuracy and critical hit rate, but it lowers his special defense. So you got to be careful against those special attackers, but drop down the hard as diamonds, drop down the X attack, and then boom, throw out a couple of stone edges and you're most likely guaranteed to get critical hit strikes on the stone edge. However, if you want to finish the enemy off as fast as possible, drop down a heart as diamonds, drop down an X attack, and then follow it up with the Shining Gem Continental Crush, which is the strongest physical attack sync move currently in the game. It is incredible, and I cannot wait to unlock Lycanroc to test that out. Now, the next one I want to talk about is actually a Pokemon I just unlocked, raised up. It's currently one of my strongest Pokemon in the game, my strongest sync pairs. And that is Brandon and Trico. Now, Trico does not evolve. However, there is the possibility that Trico will evolve down the line. Now, I've got Trico on my team, and right now, he is one of the best Pokemon that you can get to help you take down super courses because of his amazing attack and special attack and his speed. Look at those, look at those stats. 306 attack, 306 special attack, and 340 speed. He's got just an overall an amazing moveset, overall an amazing stat block 
for this Pokemon. However, there is a caveat behind this. Now, usually what's going to happen, you're going to want a Pokemon like Superior on the team, which you can use the move gauge because you're going to want to drop down the no turning back. Now, the user uh, uses a maximum of three slots of user's move gauge based on this amount used. This move raises the user's attack and special attack to the maximum of six, which is which is like the highest it can possibly go. So you drop down a no turning back. You drop down a dire hit, which sharply raises the user's critical hit rate. Then you drop down a Leaf of Storm, which does an amazing amount of damage, but it does have a caveat behind it. It sharply lowers the user's special attack. And so if you're dropping down Leaf Storm, you're not going to be able to use Leaf Storm again right after that because his special attack is going to be significantly lower and it's not going to do any damage, which means you're going to want to drop down a no turning back again, which will again raise his stats up to the maximum, even if it's already been decreased from using the Leaf Storm. But there is kind of a good thing behind that too because the uh, Grass Sync move right here is a physical attack. So even if you do use Leaf Storm, his special attack is decreased, but his physical attack isn't. So it is kind of nice to use the no turning back, throw out a dire hit, throw down a leaf uh, storm, and then use his grass sink impact, and it'll all give you that uh, that maximum amount of damage you need. But once you've run out of no turning back, he kind of becomes a Pokemon that kind of plays the sideline because his leaf storm becomes impractical to use. His bullet seed is good if you can get a critical hit on it, but in the end, it's probably not going to be the best to use uh, because you're probably not going to have enough of those critical hits. So once you've used up your no turning back, his Leaf Storm pretty much becomes useless. But he's a really good Pokemon to just jump in there, take the enemy out as fast as you possibly can, and then use some side Pokemon to kind of clear out the fodder Pokemon on the right and left. Now the last Pokemon I want to talk about when it comes to physical strength is right here. This is Nolan and Mega Pinsir. Now, Mega Pinsir has the highest physical attack in the game at 365. Now, he doesn't have the strongest when it comes to uh, actual attack moves, but he does have the X attack, which sharply raises the user's attack on top of his own uh, 365. Drop down a couple of X scissors if you want to. That will do some pretty decent damage. But the Fury Cutter is one that if you can start it from the very beginning, will just slowly increase in power as you play through that matchup. It can become an insane powerhouse towards the end. Now his sync move is called Factory Head X Scissor, which does a decent amount of damage at 192, dropping him to the Mega Pincer. So you're going to want to use a lot of trainer abilities and then at the same time using Fury Cutter because Fury Cutter only takes... A single move gauge so make sure you're kind of throwing that in there every once in a while too and then drop down some x attacks get that x scissor out there or no use the fury cutter and you're gonna be doing an amazing amount of damage to kind of finish off the enemy he's also got the bring it on which restores a bit of the user's hp as well as sharply raises the user's speed this is an ability that you can use to make sure that pincer stays in the fight to make sure that the fury cutter stays on its succession he's also got for his passive skills and pervious which means none of his his stats can be lowered which is really really important when it comes to super courses because there are some super courses where the pokemon will lower your stats if they get their sync moves off so impervious it is an incredibly powerful ability and then the unhindered when the pokemon uses a move to attack it ignores the damage reducing effects on the opponent's field of play so if you got if the opponent has certain effects that decrease your attack or decrease damage taken it's not going to matter when it comes to Mega Pinsir. He's going to go in there and he's going to take you out, which makes his Fury Cutter all the more that impressive. So finally, let's go ahead and talk about our last two Pokemon. These are the sort of tech style Pokemon. These are the ones that have abilities that kind of hinder your opponent, not necessarily boost to your opponent or debuffs. These are Pokemon that pretty much mess with your opponent, make sure that they're not getting their attacks off. The first one we're going to talk about is Will and Zatu. Zatu is good all around, doesn't really have the best special attacks or attacks defense. He's got okay speed, but the key point to having this Pokemon, this Sync Pair on your team, comes straight down to the Confuse Ray. Automatically leaves the target confused, which then powers up his stored power. Uh, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. It is... oh, where is it? Right here. Its power increases if the target's uh, confused. 
So if you drop down the Confuse Ray, the Mystery Masquerade Psychic ability becomes all that more powerful. The stored power, the more the user's stats are raised, the greater the power of this move. Now this one's really interesting because um, the R Power is Limitless ability that Will's got, if any of the target's stats have been raised, and that means the Pokemon that you're fighting against, the user's same stats are raised by double the amount. So if you're going up against, this would work really, really well if you're going up against another special attacker. If the special attacker's special attack is then raised, then Zatu's special attack is raised double the amount of the Pokemon that he's fighting. So using the R power is limitless ability at the correct moment, then dropping down a Confuse Ray, by that time you should be able to drop down the Mystery Masquerade Psychic ability and do some pretty significant damage on top of the fact that the Pokemon is confused. He's also got the Impervious stat, which means that his stats cannot be lowered, as well as he's got a decent amount, like he's got a variety of moves to use. He's got a Flying ability, he's got a Ghost ability, and he's got a Psychic ability, so he can kind of cover a good amount. Like, well, I mean, specifically with the Stored in the Power, he can cover a variety of different Pokemon on the takedown, rather than being like, stuck under like one type of Pokemon ability, which you see a lot of the other ones have. Now the last one I want to talk about is Agatha and Gengar. Now Gengar has the highest, uh, right here, the highest special attack in the game at 339. Extremely, extremely powerful Pokemon, which you could potentially put this on the tier list for special attackers. But the reason why this one mainly falls under the category of a tech Pokemon is mainly its Hypnosis ability. Dropping down the Hypnosis ability is really, really good for Super Corpses. It puts the target to sleep, which then you can use Hex. Its power is doubled if the target is affected by a status condition, which sleep is a status condition. Drop down a couple of Hexes, as well as the Run Along Now radically raises the user's speed. The user takes damage based on its maximum HP which that means personally yourself. Now it has a small chance of lowering the target's special defense, so you do have to be kind of careful because he can kind of end up, you know, damaging himself for that extra speed, but he becomes uh, Mega Gengar. Now this power, this move's power increases if the opponent is asleep. So the main point of the Mega Gengar combination is to drop down Hypnosis, drop down a couple of Hexes. If you see yourself kind of running behind the other Pokemon, Maybe drop down the run along now to increase his overall speed, but then once you've got that sync move off, activate it, make sure they're under hypnosis, and you'll be able to do a significant amount of damage. It's a really high powerful attack. And then um, for his passive ability, he's got wide awake, which means he is impervious to sleeping. Well guys, that is some of the top tier Pokemon that you should be getting once the game goes live, hopefully by the end of this month. I've been really enjoying it. If you guys are playing it, let me know your thoughts down below on this tier list. Which ones are your favorite Pokemon? If you have any of these Pokemon on your own personal team, let me know as well. Well guys, my name is Coolio, and I'll see you next time.